I've had so many dreams recently, I feel a bit tired. I need a hand. Or maybe I need... The Art Ninja Giant Hand! So I've got a nice big piece of card, and using my hand as a guide, I'm going to draw a massive hand. Lovely. Let me cut that out. It's looking pretty good. I need a strap so I can wear the hand. So I'm going to make that by rolling up a piece of corrugated cardboard. There we go. I'm going to hold that together with some masking tape. And another one. It's looking pretty good. Now I need to pat it out to look like a real hand. So I'm going to roll up some newspaper into sausage shapes and wrap them around the fingers. Go around like that. I'm using masking tape just because paper mache sticks to it better. Sticky tape has kind of got a glossy coating and the glue doesn't take to it very well. Now I'm doing the palm. Have a look at your own hand and see where the muscle's built up. So I've got this big pad here for my thumb. There. And then I'm going to wrap some newspaper around the wrist. I'm wrapping whole pages over like this just to smooth it off a bit. Right? It's all held down nice and tight, ready for paper mache. So I've got some mix here, two parts glue, one part water, and some little squares of newspaper. I'm going to give it a good, generous covering. Need to do maybe two or three layers of this, and that's just to stiffen it up and make it nice and strong, ready for painting. It's messy, but so relaxing to do. Right, I'm going to add a bit of detail to the front now. And that is going to be some nails. So I've cut out some card. I'm not going to paper mache over the tip of the nails, so the nails still have a nice sharpness to them. And just one layer should do it here. I need this to dry. Nailed it! That's ready for painting. My flesh colour. You can mix up a colour that matches your skin. Great. I need that to dry and to add some detail. So I'm going to use some ninja skills. Yeah, check that out. Now I've added some detail here with some darkening of the knuckles to give them definition and I've painted the nails to make them look more realistic. Now for some finishing touches. How about a thumb ring made from gold card and a nice friendship band made from plaited paper. Well, I think that deserves a big hand. Thank you. You don't have to make a giant hand. How about a big hairy foot with colorful nails? Or a monster claw. It gets a thumbs up from me. So, Gab, we're literally going to breathe life into this old wall. And all we need is a stills camera, a tripod, and the wild imaginations of these two, Rich and Matt. Trust me on this one. Now, we've had special permission to paint this wall, and I'm going to be wearing this... For protection. For protection. We've made a stencil out of card, which we're going to paint in and move along the wall so it's the same size each time. It's really detailed, but it does drag on a bit. Funny you should say that. Drag on, dragon. Oh, yeah. That's looking great, guys. Are you ready to capture it? Capture it? You can't capture a dragon. Yes, we can. This is where the camera and the tripod comes into play and where the art comes into its own. OK, guys, jump out the way. We're using a tripod because it's really important to keep the camera steady to make the animation smooth. Got it. OK, guys, back to work. That's a 
second picture, so it's time to take the second photograph. Now we're going to keep painting pictures and taking photographs and at the end edit them all together to make an awesome animation. So, cue montage. Come on boys! We're painting over the previous frames of the animation so it looks like the dragon's moving forwards. Hey Gav, watch that dragon fly. Dragon fly? I thought it was a dragon. Last frame here. Now I want to move the camera. New shot for me. Ricky, do you want me to move these? No, 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 mate. You can leave them right where they are, because in a minute, we're going to have that dragon over a barrel. Let's get back to work. Okay, guys, I'm taking charge of the camera. You're in charge of the last bit. Get spraying. That's it, guys. It's looking great. I think it's time to take the last frame. Gavin, you come in and stand there just by the wall. That's it, by the dragon so then you can be in the final film. Oh, brilliant. Thanks, Ricky. You won't regret it. You might. Take your hat and that off. Let's see your pretty face. Right. Final picture. And with a little bit of ninja magic, here's the final result. Wow, that dragon really is the kind of life of its own. Hey, he's still smouldering. Somebody put him out. With pleasure. Ricky, can you make art with milk? OK. I choose you. Yay! What are your names? My name's Milo. My name's Sophie. And where are you from? Aberdeen. I'm going to use the milk to draw a secret picture worthy of a special agent. I'll just go grab my things. So I've got myself a little ironing board. I don't need that right now, so put that to one side. I've also got a little bowl for my milk, a brush, and two pieces of paper. So let me pour out some of my milk. There we go. Oh, spilt a bit. No point crying over it, though. <laughs> and I'm going to draw this car. So let me just pop that over there. I'm going to start drawing my car. So, I see some pictures behind you. Is that your works of art? Yeah. Whose is whose? My name's Snowman behind my book. Oh, it's an awesome snowman. And the other one is uh, a picture of the art ninja. An art ninja? That's what I like to see on the wall. So, a couple of tips here, because you can't really see what you're doing, is to lean back like that so the milk catches the light, so you can see a bit more of your drawing. Also, I'm putting quite a bit of milk on the brush, and I'm using a very nice thin brush. Another tip is to concentrate. What would you draw if you had invisible paint? A secret code or something, so that means if they do be able to see the invisible paint, they still won't be able to crack the code. That's two levels of encryption. First of all, it's invisible, and then when you can see it, it doesn't make any sense. How's it looking? You can't see it, can you? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I do see a little bit of it. Now I'm going to use a little trick to reveal the picture. So I need my ironing board. Put it down on my ironing board. And I'm
and a piece of paper on top. This is a great way of sending secret messages to your friends, or maybe even secret art. And now I'm going to iron it. This will burn the milk and reveal the picture. Now you need to be careful if you're using an iron at home, or make sure you've got a guardian or parent to supervise you, or why not get them to do it for you? And this works best with full cream milk, but semi-skimmed is fine. If you want, just check underneath one corner to check that the milk's cooking. It does smell. OK, now I'm going to put the iron away and turn it off safely. I'm going to get rid of my ironing board. Yeah, and now you can take off the top piece of paper. You guys ready to see it? Yeah. What do you think of that? Oh, that turned out really well. I think my secret milk car picture is utterly brilliant and deserves a frame. What mark would you give it? Double out of ten. Ha! I spy what you did there. Thanks for your suggestion, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Wanted a bit more spring in your step? How about more wing on your shoe? For once, this product might actually take off. Here's how you make it. Grab some craft foam and a pencil and draw yourself a lightning bolt. Cut that out. and use that lightning bolt as a template to make another. Now grab yourself some different coloured card. With glue, glue your lightning bolts to it. Now cut those out and leave a border. Sparkly. Now grab some more coloured craft foam and stick the lightning bolts on top. Cut them out again with another border. Now you'll need a shoe. Use the eyelets to mark where the holes will be. Grab some modelling clay and use the pencil to poke some holes. Now lace them onto your shoes. Great. Now you could do that with your other shoe. Or try some different designs, like some nice butterfly ones, or some bat wings, or some dragon wings, or some flames. That is some incredible feat. Gavin, if you could just keep that spider mm -hmm. away from me, safely over there in its box, weaving its little web. Well, that gives me an idea for some art. I'm going to make the Art Ninja Rug. OK, I've got a nice big bit of card here. I've drawn a ninja on it, but you can draw whatever you like. Now, with a pencil and a ruler, I'm going to leave little marks on the top and bottom, about a centimetre apart. And now the top side. Now I'm going to cut some slits up these lines, about one centimetre deep. I know it's not looking like a rug yet, but what I'm doing is making a weaving board that I can make my rug on. I've got some black wool here, and I'm going to use that to create the lines that I can weave in between. So I'm just sliding the wool in between the two slots, the top here, and the first one I'm going to tie off. I'm going to start wrapping it round. I'm pulling the wool taut in between the slots so it keeps the weave together nice and tight. I'm going to tie that off at the back. Just trim off those little bits. Now I've got a perfect weave board. I'm going to start weaving. So I've got strips of white material here. I'm going to start with the detail of the eyes. I'm going to start by just tying it in. Now you can get the material from anywhere you like. You can even use old T-shirts and clothes. Like this. I'm going to try and keep the material nice and flat and weave over the first piece of wool and then under the second. And I'm going to go back on myself here, so wrap it round. And I'm going to go back the opposite way. So where my material has gone over, I'm going to go under. And where I've gone under, 
I'm going to go over. Creates this nice kind of brickwork pattern. It's great. It's going to tie that off. Now I'm going to move on to the other eye. Now I'm going to start with the black of the ninja. And get weaving. Since this is the background, you need to weave underneath the eyes. Now we'll do the red background. Now I've cut these slightly longer than the board. It just means I can tie them off later. And the end bits become cool kind of ruggy tassels. And I'm pushing it all to the top to keep it tucked in nice and tight. I'm just weaving red under the black of the ninja. And it's really starting to take shape and stand out now. I'm going to start tying off the red ends. Literally tying the one with the one next to it. I'm going to double knot them so they're nice and secure. Do that all the way down both sides. Now I need to cut it off the card. I'm going to cut through all these strands of wool. I'm going to turn it over carefully. And I'm going to tie these off in pairs. I'm going to pull them off over the front, pull them in tight and double knot them. Now it's completely off the card. Just going to clean up these edges. Be careful not to cut past the knot, because then it will all unravel. Now I've cut out some little extra shapes and material here to add some final detail. Now I'm going to stick them on with a bit of fabric glue. Ninja headband, pupils, and I'm going to finish up with a little cheeky ninja grin. I'm going to weave this underneath the wall so it looks like teeth. There you go. I think that looks absolutely incredible. But you didn't have to make a rectangular one. You can make any shape you like. How about a nice circular one? I wove this one on the inside of a hula hoop.